Okay, so in today's Ratchet and Watch setup guide, I'm going to be showing you how to use and apply overlays. So rather than having those boring black sides, we can now pimp out how our retro games look by using these overlays. So everything's going to be included in this video for getting you set up with this, so check this one out. <laughs> Okay, before I start today's Retro Watch setup guide, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. That just means you'll get notified every time I release a retro setup guide like the one I'm doing today. Now, before I go any further, let me just announce that I've just released or rather made live my dedicated Commodore channel, and this is going to cover every Commodore system uh, from back in the early days of Commodore to present. So uh, feel free to subscribe. And that's Commodore Rediscovered. So, anyways, let's get back to RetroArch. So, I'm using a brand new portable version of this. And if I just open up RetroArch, what we're going to do then is actually show you how to download and use overlays. So, if you're not familiar with what overlays are, uh, say you're playing an old game like a 4x3 Nintendo NES game or even a Commodore 64 game, and it's got the black bars on the side. Well, we can actually cover those black bars with something called overlays in RetroArch. So first thing I'm going to do is just import a couple of games into RetroArch. And if you're new to RetroArch, check out my RetroArch playlist. Um, I've got a lot of guides in there, especially customization. Okie doke, so I've got my NES games now imported. We've got the very awesome Silkworm, Simpsons Bot vs. Space Mutants, and Super Mario Bros. 2. So next thing I'm going to need to do is obviously download a core for this. So to download a core, I'm going to go to Main Menu, Online Updater. And let me just assure you that if I'm going a little bit too fast, I do normally go a little bit slower in my main RetroArch setup guides. But we're just looking at overlays for this. So we're going to use Core Downloader. And I'm going to just quickly download a core for Nintendo NES. And I'm going to select FCEUMM. Okie doke. So next thing we need to do then is actually download the overlays themselves. So online updater again. And from here, if we just scroll down, we're going to find update overlays. If I just use this one and install it, so I'm pressing A on my Google Stadia controller. Okie doke. So whilst I'm here, let me just tell you as well, if you're interested in using cheats in RetroArch, you're not sure how to use them, I've actually covered this a couple of weeks ago. So anyways, we've got our overlays, and what I'm going to do next then is actually start a game. So I'm going to start uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, and obviously need to select my RetroArch core for this one. What I'm going to do with this is actually run it by default without applying those overlays. So if I could just go to run... And good lord, this game consumed hours of my childhood back in the day. So anyways, to access overlays and to apply them, what I'm going to do is just enter into my RetroArch Quick menu by pressing my Google Stadia button. If you're using an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, it's likely going to be your main Xbox button or your main PS button. So once we're in Quick Menu, if we just scroll down, we're going to find On-Screen Overlay. If we just go in there, we need to turn this one on. And here we go. So once this is enabled, we're going to have loads of different options here. So first of all, we need to go into Overlay Preset. And from here, we're going to have various different overlays we can use. For example, if we go to Borders, we're going to find Borders here. So let's just go for this NES Super Mario Bros. 2 border. If I select this by pressing A, and if I come out of it and go back into the games, so main menu, quick menu, and resume. Now, obviously, the overlay has been applied, but it's a little bit too big for the actual game. If this is the case, we can change aspect ratio settings. So I'm going to go to settings, video, and if I go down to scaling and aspect ratio, 
So what I'm going to do with this is go to config and then once we select the aspect ratio for config, you'll get an option beneath it then, config aspect ratio. And by left pressing and right pressing on D-pad, as you can see, that's beginning to squeeze in and out. So it's going to make overlays look a little bit better if you configure how this looks. So not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but the options are there if you want to resize the gameplay image. So anyways, if we want to apply other overlays, obviously we're going to go to quick menu, back down to on-screen overlay, and overlay preset. And if I go into my NES and in border folder, if I apply NES folder dot CFG, and go back into the game. Now, obviously, because I just messed around with the settings for the previous overlay, all I need to do then is go back and I'm going to go back down to scaling again. And I'm just going to stretch this out just a slight. And I'm pretty sure you've heard of the story, but this Super Mario Brothers game, I always thought this was a bit odd back in the day even. Uh, turns out this is actually a Japanese game, which actually got turned for a Super Mario Brothers game using Super Mario Brothers sprites. Uh, so a bit more history than that, but um, that's the basics of it. So if you've ever played Mario Brothers 2 with all, this game doesn't quite fit in with the other games, that's the reason. But anyways, if we go back down to on-screen overlay again, Let's just say, for example, you're happy with this NES border I've just applied. We can actually increase or decrease the opacity. So if I go downwards and go back into the game. And as you can see, it's changed, it's gone darker. And if I go back down to overlay opacity again, let's just whack this one up as far as it goes. So 1.00, if we go back into the game. And as you can see just there before I died, <laughs> the overlay is a lot brighter. It looks a lot nicer that way, I think. Other things we can do by going to on-screen overlay is if we just go down to show inputs on overlay, this one's currently on physical controller. We can either turn this off or maybe put touched on. If I come back out and go back into the game. And as you can see this time around, the buttons on the overlays, they're not pressing down when I'm pressing down on my controller. Now, if we go further down in the on-screen overlay menu, you're going to come across auto scale overlay. If I turn this one on, what this does, it automatically matches the overlay with the screen size or rather the aspect ratio of the game. So this one's also very useful to apply. And of course, once you're happy with the settings that you've selected, you do need to save all this. Otherwise, there's a potential that RetroArch is going to forget about everything. So to save your settings, if we go to overrides, we can go down to save game overrides, which as it says, save an override configuration file, which will apply for the current content only. So if you want no settings for overlays applies just for this one particular game, then save game overrides. If you want to save all of, say, your Nintendo NES games to use this format with the overlays in your video settings, then go to save content directory overrides. So if I come back out of RetroArch, let's just uh, restart RetroArch. Now, if I go back into my game again, in fact, I'm going to use a different game this time because I just saved it to apply to all my NES games. If I go into Silkworm. And 
as we can see that's now been applied because I selected the option to apply it to all games using this particular core. So I'm going to try that again with the Simpsons Bart vs Space Mutants. Again another game I played as a child and I couldn't get enough of this one. I know there's a lot of hate towards Bart vs the Space Mutants. But if you're like me, it's definitely got a nostalgic feel to it still. <laughs> Eat my short. That's it for today's retro watch and how to set up overlays for your game so hopefully i've got you up and running with your game so a little bit nicer than those plain boring black sites that you normally get by default so anyways check out my retro watch playlist and for customization settings i've recently done the retro watch cheats guide and how to use them and i've also done how to customize menu themes within retro watch as well as general setup guides for various different systems supported by retro watch Anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. And just remember, if you're a Commodore fan at all, do join my new channel, which is Commodore Rediscovered. It's very awesome. And my sub list is already growing in just a few hours. I'm really impressed with that. So anyways, until next time, stay retro.